I'm uh, Zach Benton and I go to uh, Gaffney High School. I've been going since I was transferred into the 10th grade. I transferred over to Gaffney High School in the 10th grade and uh, it's been going pretty good from there and um, you know I've been reading braille and uh, working with different pieces of technology to take notes and things in school and it's been a really good transition. I mean I've made it this far, you know, it's been really good. My experience with using Braille is, you know, I like using it. It really helps provide me with lots of information under my fingertips. I mean, it's a bit quicker and stuff, you know, than traditional uh, other things and stuff. But, um, you know, I've always like to uh, using it and stuff. It's, I mean, and of course, I prefer to use audio, but I use Braille most of the time I can, you know, because sometimes it makes it a little easier. You know, I've been using the computer for a while, and you know, I'm on some certain social networks, and everybody sometimes will be talking to me, they're just like, well, how come I can't hear your speech anymore? And, and I'm just like, well, I use a Braille display. And uh, what a Braille display is, is it outputs what the computer screen says instead of speaking it. It'll basically output what the screen reader speaks to the Braille display. That's all it does. I use a Dell netbook, I think. It's a Latitude 2120 with, uh, you know, 1.5 gigahertz processor, 2 gigabytes RAM, and Windows 7. But I use Braille for reading my tests and my some of my textbooks and questions and stuff you know different standard things like that and tactile graphics as well is where Braille really does a good job of coming into play some classes I prefer electronically and some that I prefer Braille if I want to be able to get something done quick very very quickly I usually use audio because I can hear things faster than I can read them. Usually I prefer using Braille when working with math problems and sometimes when I go to read things to people. Oh man, when I first started learning Braille I was basically maybe about five years old or something and um, <clears throat> I uh, basically had a braille writer in front of me and I was just learning the braille cells and you know standard letters and then it went from there to saying what standard letters meant because they can also mean things now which is what the standard is in braille which is you know like C for can or G for go and uh, things of that measure you know just different ones and then you go into contractions and they're a little bit more complicated but they're not as hard as you would think unless you're like me and you get your E's and I's mixed up sometimes okay I would say the hardest thing with some contractions like E and I those were like the hardest thing and sometimes I can stumble upon them if I don't keep reading it some of the fun things about Braille is that you can create tactile graphics just by using literary Braille. You know, you don't need to uh, learn any new code. You just figure out some shapes and things, and you can use just some of the stuff you already know. It's pretty cool because you can create pictures with Braille as well as other materials, not just literary things. I would have to say say um I don't have a really favorite book I like to read a lot of sometimes I'll read a little bit of action or romance novels and stuff like that I don't read too many romance stuff it has to have some action in it somewhere too I like to read a lot of books where things can have twists and turns and uh, action in it basically most of the time, to be honest, I usually listen to them. But that's not to say that I don't use Braille when I can. I mean, I do. 
I would think that it would be a good thing to keep Braille preserved as the way that it's supposed to be and, you know, be able to teach it to people because, you know, it's still essential to read as far as math and things like that are concerned. And, I mean, people might be faster with Braille than uh, audio. I mean, you never know until you try it because it's something new. I mean, not everybody likes it at first, but sometimes you'll either like it or you won't. But it doesn't make a difference whether you like it or not. If you need to learn it, you should try it and don't knock it till you try it because, you know, I mean, it's, it's still a good thing, even though I don't use it as much as I probably should sometimes. I mean, because lots of times I've relied on audio and, um, I mean, but I still use Braille though because it's been a part of me for many, many years and that's just the way that I am, you know. I'm not going to stop reading Braille completely, but yes, I haven't been reading as much. I really don't use a Brailler that much, but I still use it sometimes. Like, to take notes and everything like that, because, you know, i got to keep up on my Brailler and everything. And that's what I'm making sure I'm striving for, making sure I have all my skills and everything before I go out in the real world. And, uh, you know, but most of the time, whenever I'm composing things, because it's a little bit faster for me, I've just found it to be that way, is um, I've used a netbook or any kind of computer to compose my work with uh, the freeware processor called Jart. Um, because to me, really, I don't use Microsoft Word, but many people do. But I find it very cumbersome on a netbook. I got my first computer maybe in 2006 or 2007, one or the other. And I've been working with Windows XP when I first got my computer. Um, I had, you know, no knowledge of Linux yet. And, you know, I was playing around with it. And I had to do stuff. I would go on different websites and oh, get viruses, basically. The only way I really was able to start teaching myself was messing my first computer up. And that's basically what happened. And I finally figured out how to, what to tell people to do, reinstall the operating system and all that. I just asked them, like, what does this screen say? What does this screen say? So, basically, that's what I would do. And then, you know, we just have the whole point and click thing. And I would be able to just tell them by memorizing these different screens what to do most of the time. The only thing that really drives me nuts is when I get into a jail when I don't, well, I'm not able to fix something. <laughs> That's the only thing that can really frustrate me, but most of the time I've been able to fix problems, it would just take a bit of tweaking and stuff, you know. But I've learned you never really shouldn't give up until you know that you just, well, don't think you can't do it. Unless, uh, you know, just don't think you can't do it. You never can tell unless you try. I'm currently a student in um, Gaffney High School, and I've been there since 10th grade. Well, half of like 10th grade, I think. Um, I basically started out in um, the blind school, and I, you know, I moved on up and stuff until I got, got stuck in like fourth grade for a little while, and I had to move on up a little bit. They said, well. Since you're a little bit more advanced, we can kind of move you up to about the 6th grade level because it seems like that's what you're working with. So I moved up from there, and I mean, yeah, I had a bit of trouble in school sometimes. And then you would have your 7th was when I started going to Carper Junior High School, which is in Spartanburg, and I went there for, let's see, 7, 8, 9. I went for about 3 years, and after that, you know, I got into the 10th grade, you know, I was like, well, this is getting kind of hard. I don't have enough time on my hands, and, you know, things were getting a little funky. And, you know, I was talking to people, and I was like, well, why can't I go to Gaffney High School? You know, and um, not that I had any, anything against anyone else, because I didn't. I just wanted to be able to do what was best for my graduation and, you know, what was best to keep me going forward in life. So I transferred over to Gaffney High School, I think, the second semester. I would think that the experience, if you can handle it of course, 
regarding the any kind of teacher thinks you can or can't handle it, you know, that's based on any of the teacher's perspective. Uh, they uh, seeing how you act and everything. And if you can act right and everything else, I mean, it's a really good experience. It helps you meet new people and share your kind of outlooks to people who are willing to hear you out, you know. I felt that people who needed help shouldn't, uh, you know, people who needed help should be able to ask for it, you know, and get help when they need it and, you know, also, I feel that people should be able to do what they want to do even when they set their mind to it, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I want to show everybody that they can do because you can do anything if you set your mind to it. You just have to try. There have been times when I have had to ask for help sometimes when I was in the hallways like during my 10th grade year or my 11th grade year. I would get lost <laughs> sometimes because I was just kind of learning my way around. And sometimes I do it right, and then other days I have my funny days and just do it all wrong. Like, mm, I got lost. Uh, excuse me, can you kind of help me um, to this classroom? I need to go to like U.S. history or uh, somewhere around there. People were usually willing to help, and you know, I mean, I've talked to several people, and you know, told them blindness isn't an impairment of the brain. It basically just impairs your eyes, which are, you know, these right here. They don't, it's not that it impairs the brain to function. It just disconnects the eyes from the brain. So mm -hmm. I've had no vision ever since I was little. You know, I was born without any vision, pretty much. None. And I have not really any particular knowledge of what objects look like, but the thing is, if you use your other senses, you can basically make representations of what other objects look like just by feeling them either small replicas or, you know, things like that. That's how I've done it. People may have different methods, but that's how I do it. Um, I've had people ask me for help with, you know, uh, science questions or anything like that. I mean, other than that, I've been able to help people with science or English and stuff like that. But only subject that I'm weakest in is my math subject. I'm not the best in that, but usually I ask away because I'm always willing to help anyone who needs it or, you know, just find something to do for someone that really helps get the job done. You know, it's just all, what it's all about. You gotta get the job done one way or the other. When I was a kid, um, I was in the blind school, you know, and um, I had a lot of good friends, whether they were older than me or younger than me. But the one who intrigued me the most was Mr. Merriweather, and uh, he's a teacher now over at the blind school, and uh, he's done a really good job at helping kids and, you know, telling them, look, it's not all about, the world doesn't really revolve around just you, you know, you have to, basically he told us that we had to be independent and, you know, that the world didn't revolve around you, so you couldn't always try to ask for help all the time. You had to do it yourself, you know. And that still should be the way it is now, because I mean, you're not, you're not, um, you're not brain impaired. You're just visually impaired. You can do anything that you would set your mind to. You're only limited to what you think you can't do. Okay, I would consider myself a role model to, you know people who are younger because there are others out there that are like, well, will you help me with this? Will you help me with this? I'm just like, okay, well, you have to be a little bit more independent and, you know, strive on your own to do these things as well. I mean, I'll, I'll help you with it, but try to remember how to do it next time, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't consider myself a role model to just one person, though, but very many because, you know, I remain humble, but... I'm willing to offer a helping hand to anyone who usually asks, and then I usually give them advice of how they can improve something, you know, any, anything in general, really. I'm going to graduate May of this year, and my plans after graduation is to be an IT specialist or specialize in computers and maybe networking, and that's basically what I want to do with my life. I've worked with it pretty much since 
2000, uh, maybe 2006 or 2007. I've worked with it for a very long time and computers and programs and software have always really intrigued me about everything that they do and you know it's really interesting to see how all this stuff works and to be able to fix it and you know take it apart and build my own basically would, would make me feel good because then you know I wouldn't have to worry about uh, where it all comes from because I buy it and then I build it you know simple as that I'm a real avid believer in accessibility so don't be surprised if you hear me say accessibility should be a right to anybody. I believe that accessibility should be a right to anyone with any kind of device that you know uses that particular technology and I want to strive as much as I can to make that happen whether it be anywhere from you know just big things to small things to fix stuff 